Hello everybody, I am Professor J. K. Ray of IIT Kharagpur. In connection with our discussion on nitrogen containing organic compounds, today we want to recapitulate some of the terms and then proceed to see how carbon nitrogen compounds have invaded in the field of antibiotics, color chemistry and many other field in details. Uh, as I started yesterday with a very lucid definition of organic compound, because people still believe in organic compounds mean that it is coming from the living sources. But if we look at the literature, we will find very interesting things. Look at this, long ago in 1780s, organic compounds obtained from living sources and inorganic compounds obtained from non-living sources. So, this was the definition and everything whatever organic used to be used to come from living sources. In 1828, the pioneer work of Oler, the first synthesis of urea by heating ammonium cyanate is the remarkable work in that sense. If you count the number of nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon and oxygen in ammonium cyanate and that of urea, you will find the same number of nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon and oxygen atoms are there. So, it is some sort of rearrangement, but this is fantastic work in that sense, because the ammonium cyanate was prepared from inorganic sources. So, from inorganic sources we are getting the organic compound without using any vital force. So, that was the first breakthrough in the definition of organic chemistry that is chemistry of carbon compound that is why I said yesterday it is the carbogenic compound. And then of course, many many total synthesis, partial synthesis and other synthetic methods have been discovered where the biological systems or the uh, living sources are not needed. So, that vital force theory is now in that way is abundant, because earlier urea people used to get from urine and now people can synthesize very easily by the work of two very pioneering chemists. One is Haber, you know the Haber synthesis of ammonia that is nitrogen and hydrogen in the catalytic condition and uh, this ammonium salt is very good fertilizer and that produces lots of uh, food needed in the field from the field and uh, the revolution has started in that way. So, this ammonium cyanate to urea is the first synthetic work. Then question comes ok, organic chemistry was earlier a vital force theory without living sources organic compounds cannot be obtained. But now look at the literature and can you believe how many organic compounds are there? It 2001 survey was found 16 million that is also not optimized. How many more are possible? Sky is the limit. The total number of compounds coming out every day from laboratories, industries are going in number and so sky is the limit is the better to call that uh, so many compounds will come. And from that as our topic today is on carbon nitrogen bond or nitrogen containing organic compounds means now carbon compound. So, carbon nitrogen bond is a must and look at the urea molecule it has the carbon nitrogen bond C O N H 2 N H 2 or C O N H 2 hole 2 where there is a direct bonding of carbon and nitrogen. And life is organic chemistry though it came from the vital force theory. Organic chemistry is the chemistry of the compounds of carbon that is why I said that carbogenic terminology is much more uh, perfect 
to define the carbonic organic chemistry. Here there are some controversy that where what is the origin of life? Is it the organic molecule that is carbon containing thing methane carbon dioxide or the inorganic things like ammonia, hydrogen and water? And there are many controversies, but people believe that all these gases under electric discharge like lightning generated some highly reactive species which in turn produced amino acid, formaldehyde, hydrogen cyanide, purines, pyrimidines which are the building block of the life. So, origin of life came from again this carbon compound. So, we organic chemists believe together with some other gases the beginning or origin of life came from carbogenous material as simple as carbon dioxide, methane etcetera. I yesterday said about the carbon nitrogen bonds importance in very industrially important compounds. Now, if you look at the structure this is the tricolor inside that there is a benzene ring with a pyrrole unit. Pyrrole unit means 5 member nitrogen containing thing exactly it is collect, connected by the other half only thing is the carbonyl is up over there and the carbonyl is down over there in between there is a carbon carbon double bond. So, this type of structural feature is present in a very industrially important and uh, important for many purposes that is called indigo. An organic molecule contributes to freedom struggle how come it is coming what is the freedom struggle how this organic molecule is doing a role. If we look at the literature we will find during British period especially the in Bengal then uh, what happened the indigo planting was forcefully done by the British people. Why? Because the blue dye is very very popular in Europe and to cultivate indigo the planters had to forego their food production they are forced to cultivate indigo and then what happens the farmers they did not get lot of money. So, they were forced to cultivate indigo. Then question come what is indigo that structure I showed and it is on the top over there that it is nothing but benzopyrrole we call it indole another benzopyrrole indole and two carbonyl groups are there. So, this type of simple molecule being isolated from indigo plants by lot of extraction procedure. Why not people can make it by simple chemistry? It was undertaken by lot of chemists all over the world and fortunately Robin in UK he first discovered a method for the synthesis of indigo and from that time slowly the indigo cultivation was stopped and people now can do anything and uh, no need of forcefully doing that. One thing came to my mind why the indigo is needed or the blue color thing is needed to make a white cloth brighter. Why not yellow, green, red so many colors are there. I am sure you also think that why the blue color that is robin blue or nowadays people call about ultramarine and uh, uh, crystal violet that sort of coloring thing. Why this blue is needed to get a white clothes brighter think and fi you find the answer that is in the white color it is the combination of vipgeor violet indigo blue green yellow orange red. And if we keep some white things exposed or for longer time what you see some dust dart and other things because of light ultraviolet and visible the yellow strain is getting developed. That means, the strain what is getting developed is yellow in color. Now, to make it brighter what you need? You need the complementary color. So, what is the complementary color of yellow? That is blue. So, blue being added that is robin 
blue or ultramarine then you are getting it brighter. So, that is very interesting uh, the thing that blue is the complementary color of yellow as dust and dirt making the white cloth or whatever garments little bit yellowish in color. So, to suppress that the complementary color technology giving it blue. Second question comes why the indigo why not some other thing answer is very simple if you look at the structure of indigo it has benzopyrrole another benzopyrrole connected by a double bond double bond cannot be rotated it is a restricted rotated thing. So, what is happening that is a long conjugated one benzene ring through a carbonyl another pyrrole ring to another benzene ring that electron flow is taking place. So, because of this long electron flow the compound is becoming colored. I say it in this way if the gap between the ground state and excited state is minimized by the conjugation then what will happen you need less energy to take the electron from ground to the excited level. As a result what will happen the frequency also will be less and wavelength will be more greater the wavelength brighter the color or deeper the color and intensity of the color thing is like this 200 to 400 nanometer is ultraviolet 400 to 800 nanometer is the visible range. So, that is the reason why conjugated compounds more conjugated compounds are colored and one of this good example is indigo which is a benzopyrrole or indole another benzopyrrole or indole connected together to make it long conjugated thing which is blue in color that we all know and we use it. And uh, there are some literature that time was published during the Nil movement in especially in Bengal when the people were fighting that they will not cultivate Nil they wanted to grow more food. So, many uh, literature came out and people agitated that was one of the famous literature Dinobandhu Mitros Nil Dorpon that was also translated in English. So, that era is no longer needed now that problem is solved because synthetic chemists have solved this problem by making it in the laboratory now the industry is producing in tons to make the uh, demand. Another important coloring matter is the chlorophyll. Simple question is why the plants around us we see green in color? Answer is very simple because of chlorophyll the answer is written there. But what chlorophyll does it not only provide a green color to the leaves, but it does a very important thing and if you look at the structure of chlorophyll you will find there are four pyrrole units. I told the other day that four pyrrole unit making a cavity and inside the cavity when a metal ion is fitted as per the size of the cavity as in the case of chlorophyll it is the magnesium the two nitrogen with the covalent bond and another two by the coordinate covalent bond bind it and it makes a template where lot of other substitutions in the pyrrole units makes the compound specific color in this case it is the green in color. And uh, chlorophyll is important not only to make it the leaves beautiful or green in color to absorb light from sources it converts the carbon dioxide and water to the carbohydrate that is glucose or sucrose etcetera. So, the very general reaction is 6 carbon dioxide plus 12 water plus photons that is the light coming from solar sources is converted to C6H12O6 that is glucose, fructose etcetera in aqueous solution and oxygen gas and 6 water liquid more or less balanced equation. So, from carbon dioxide and water by the help of light energy glucose, oxygen and water is being produced. I was again wondering why not we are able to produce the carbohydrate we have carbon dioxide, we have water, we have light energy answer is we do not have chlorophyll within us. So, chlorophyll is doing that miracle to convert the carbon dioxide to carbohydrates 
by the help of light and the chlorophyll that is a biocatalyst in that system. So, it is not only for beautification, but also for chemical transformation being used and this is again a part of carbon nitrogen compound. Carbon nitrogen compound I started with very simple compound as methylamine. I am now taking some more uh, amines in details. In general, when people call that organic amine means it should have a carbon nitrogen bond and if it is an amine, so obviously nitrogen should be substituted the two with the hydrogen or alkyl group. And if one of the hydrogen of R N H 2 being replaced by another R group, then what is happening? It was the primary or 1 degree amine that is R N H 2. Because of two substitution, one hydrogen is gone, so it will be secondary amine that is 2 degree. Likewise, the third alkyl group is getting entered with the loss of the hydrogen from there. So, it will be the tertiary amine. So, amines like primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, tertiary alcohol again could be classified as primary amine, secondary amine and tertiary amine. I said about carbon nitrogen single bond, carbon nitrogen double bond, carbon nitrogen triple bonded compounds and this is the amines of three types that is primary, secondary and tertiary. So, the R group not necessarily will be the alkyl, it may be alkyl, it may be aryl also. So, no nomenclature of these compounds being done as primary amine, secondary amine or tertiary amine depending on the substituents present with the amine group. For the common name of simple aliphatic amine, let us do some exercise. The alkyl groups on the nitrogen you have to count and attach the term amine at the end. Suppose there are two groups, then you put di or prefixes that, that should be at the beginning ending with amine. There are three alkyl groups, then tri, four alkyl groups, then tetra in that way. So, if I ask you, can you write the name of this compound, whereas CH3, CH2, NH, CH3. That means, with the nitrogen, one methyl, one ethyl, one hydrogen groups are there. It may be called because this is again nitrogen, hydrogen, only one substituent are there. So, it should be 2 degree, not primary amine, secondary. So, people might call it ethyl methyl amine, not so good because E in the alphabet comes first, left hand side that is the ethyl group right hand side that is the methyl group and overall it is then amine, <coughs> but that does not say <coughs> whether the substituent is on nitrogen or on carbon. If the substituent is on nitrogen as it over here, so you should call it better N methyl ethanamine, N methyl that means N methyl ethanamine is CH3, CH2, NH2, one of the hydrogen being replaced by methyl. So, N methyl ethanamine is the good system or good naming of this compound. Likewise, when nitrogen being substituted by 3 methyl group, nothing in there means methyl group carbon, carbon, carbon. So, people commonly call this type of compounds as trimethyl amine, no doubt it is okay, but again if you say the position that where the methyl groups are there, is it on carbon or is it on nitrogen, you should call it N N dimethyl methanamine, because methanamine is now clear that is CH 3 N H 2. So, with that N H 2, two hydrogen being replaced by two methyl group, so it will be called N N dimethyl methanamine. So, if you read the front line one more time, you start with the amine and before that mono di system you will have to put that is the prefix. The systematic name is derived from the name of the longest alkene that is the IUPAC general rule. The longest chain it find out name it present by dropping the final E that is amines E and adding the suffix amine. How? Then designate smaller alkyl group as shown using the italicized 
locant that is nitrogen. So, better to write the N in italicized form, italics form. Say in the first case it is N methyl ethanamine, in the second case it is N N dimethyl methanamine. So, practice with many such example from textbook or any uh, literature you will be able to do it. Okay, if we take a step forward from alkylamine to aryl amine. In aryl amine what we see that aromatic amines are there yesterday I said about an aniline and its derivatives and its conversion to the different form or different other structures. So, aromatic amines are often named as derivatives of aniline. Aniline is the basic compound nitrobenzene on reduction gives aniline and this aniline should be called benzenamine, benzenamine, benzenamine. So, that E has been removed and amine have been put benzenamine, benzenamine. In methyl aniline, if one of the hydrogen being replaced by methyl, so what, what should I call this compound? In methyl aniline, very common terminology, better term will be as per IUPAC system is N methyl benzene amine, because the benzyl amine is the parent system with the nitrogen, one hydrogen being replaced of aniline by a methyl group. Additional unique common names when R is CH3, then you can call it R is CH3 in the para position. So, people call it a para toluidine, very common terminology that toluene is benzene with a methyl group in the para position there is an amine group. So, you should call it para toluidine, these are the trivial system, but very popular now. If R is a methoxy group OCH3, then it is called para anisidine. So, these are also very commonly being used in, in naming the compounds, not only rigorous IUPAC system, but very common and trivial and helpful uh, terms still being used like para toluidine, para anisidine in that way. Amines not only are restricted to aliphatic and aromatic, the amine may be a part of a heterocyclic system as I showed the structure of chlorophyll, the structure of indigo where benzopyrrol or simple polypyrrol units are there. Likewise, the heterocyclic amine where heteroatom is a part of the cyclic compound are some simple examples are pyridine, pyrrole, pipyridine and pyrrolidine. What is the relation between pyridine and pipyridine? One is the reduced form that is pipyridine, the three double bonds have been removed by six hydrogen atoms and if you want to make pipyridine to pyridine, what you will do? You will have to dehydrogenate. One very nice technique for hydrogenation is hydrogen and for dehydrogenation normally sulfur selenium heating or even palladium charcoal heating is good enough to take off the hydrogen and palladium charcoal can adsorb the hydrogen very easily that helps that catalyzes. So, oxidation reduction phenomena makes pyridine to pipyridine and vice versa this is a redox system. Likewise, pyrrol where we see that is a conjugated butadiene system and an nitrogen atom being there, it should be attached to a hydrogen atom. So, when you reduce that pyrrole that is N H C H double bond C H single bond C H double bond C H then come back to the N H thing there should be hydrogen on the pyrrole moiety. If you reduce again what you end up you get a pyrrolidine that means hydrogenated pyrrole. So, pyrrolidine again on dehydrogenation then similar pathway will produce the pyrrole. Now, in general what are the properties of the amines? I said that amines are very much interesting compound because it is being used to make dye, to make coloring matter and other uh, functional group transformation. So, its physical properties also you should know that amines are moderately polar because R N H 2 group N H 2 is electron rich, R is mainly alkyl or aryl. So, that is the carbon. 
So, it is moderately polar because nitrogen having the non bonded electron pair it can pull electrons be between the carbon and nitrogens towards itself. So, what happened because of the greater electronegativity of nitrogen relative to carbon and hydrogen this type of phenomena takes place. Since primary amine and secondary amine that is 1 degree or 2 degree amines having NH bonds they can take part in another interesting feature that is that we call that hydrogen bond. We know mainly fluorine oxygen nitrogen we remember it in this way form, but there are many other elements also taking part in hydrogen bonding that is uh, even carbon, but very mild. So, fluorine oxygen nitrogen can take part in the hydrogen bonding. So, when nitrogen having a hydrogen and in the close proximity is donor thing is there. So, donor acceptor relationship will help. So, what happens when you boil the you treat with water then you find that the NH thing getting hydrogen bonded intermolecularly with the water. One is intramolecular another is intermolecular. So, because of intermolecular what happens because one aniline molecule is picking up number of say water molecules its molecular weight is getting increased and because of that the association is taking place greater the association greater the molecular weight and the hydrogen bonding is helping in that way. A very common question for inorganic chemistry is why a normal condition hydrogen sulphide is gas, but water is liquid. The answer is this is the association takes place much easily in water and H 2 S does not help in that type of hydrogen bonding. So, that is a case of intermolecular hydrogen bonding with the same molecule and intramolecular will be a different type thing that will come later. So, what happens if you look at the data the tertiary amines boil at lower temperature than primary and secondary, but all amines can have or can produce hydrogen bond to water. So, why this difference making low molecular weight amines water soluble how look at this table methyl cyclohexane there is no carbon nitrogen bond cyclohexyl amine there is a carbon nitrogen bond, but instead of benzene the middle ring is the cyclohexane and cyclohexanol here also no carbon nitrogen bond, but carbon oxygen bonds are there. Their molecular weight are very close one is 98 our nit carbon nitrogen bonded compound is 99 and cyclohexanol is 100. Whereas, the boi boiling point is very interesting it is 100 degree centigrade the cyclohexyl amine is 134 degree centigrade and cyclohexanol is 161.5 degree centigrade. Why this difference and water solubility the uh, we know the like dissolves like that is the very general rule for the solubility. We see that methyl cyclohexane having carbon and hydrogen nothing else it is mostly organic compounds. So, organic compounds will prefer organic solvents. So, it is insoluble cyclohexanol having the carbon carbon things, but there is an oxygen atom or alcoholic group which is a polar group which can take part in hydrogen bonding, but the methyl cyclohexane cannot. So, its solubility is little that is 3.6 gra gram per 100 milliliter, whereas aniline or cyclohexyl amine in this particular case is slightly soluble. The reason being same thing it is the intermolecular hydrogen bonding which is helping to get it solubilized and there is some polar character getting coming up on the cyclohexyl amine that is carbon nitrogen bond. Amines versus amide if we now compare amides are much less than amine even though their structural formulas both show an unshared pair of electrons pair on the nitrogen. Look at this amine R n H 2 look at the amide R C O n H 2 the nitrogen lone pairs are being shown p k a of the conjugate acid that is a very important factor to determine which one is more basic or more acidic or all this thing where amide is found to be 0 or amine is found to nearly 10 that means, it is the alkaline side when R is alkyl say methylamine or ethylamine why this p k a of the conjugate acid is 
close to 10. The answer is the decreased base strength of amide is though it contains an NH2 group, the amine also containing an NH2 group, but that NH2 is through a carbonyl group that is carbonyl and amine together that is called amide carboamide pattern. And because of that what is happening the nitrogen lone pair is coming in case of amide to make a carbon nitrogen double bond and at the same time the carbon oxygen double bond is getting converted to the single bond. That means, a delocalization of electron or resonance is taking place. So, answer is the decreased base strength of amides is very clearly explained by both resonance and inductive influence as with aryl amine. So, inductive effect means when R group is there which is electron pushing the electron density gets increased and resonance effect as I told you that nitrogen lone pair is not on the amide now it is going to the oxygen atom by delocalization through the help of carbon nitrogen bond. So, carbon nitrogen single bond getting double and carbon oxygen double bond getting single and the charge separation is taking place and the oxygen will keep the negative charge. So, that is the reason why amides are much much weaker base or than amine. Hopman rearrangement this is the thing you have studied because when I say the amide and amine then one question come can you convert an amine to amide or can you convert an amide to amine people started and there are many methods because if you hydrolyze an amide you will get a corresponding carboxylic acid make a ammonium salt you get thing you get an amide by acid chloride you can do. Likewise, if it is an amide how can you remove a carbon oxygen bond and make the R, R and N attached together. This reaction is very famous from the discoverers name the Hopman rearrangement is a very popular that is amines from primary amides. Primary amides are converted into amines by loss of the carbonyl group as I told you that the middle CO should be removed in between R and NH2 by the help of X2 and sodium hydroxide. What is X2? Mostly bromine and chlorine, but other halogens can do, but bromine and chlorine gives better result. So, what is happen? It produces R NH2 and what is happening to the middle carbon that is being converted to sodium carbonate with the help of sodium hydroxide and the, the extra bromine or chlorine that is making the sodium bromide. So, this rearrangement is called the Hopman rearrangement of 1 degree amide provides 1 degree amine that is primary amine everything being maintained with no contamination from second degree, 2 degree or 3 degree that is very important. A primary amide is given primary amine no question of any conversion or changing or rearranging to the secondary or tertiary. These reactions can useful for shortening a carbon chain. We know that in the homologous series if we want to increase how to do that say R N H 2 to we have to put some C O very simple reaction is bring that C O with the substitution and do a nitrogen nucleophilic C O electrophilic reaction I will tell you very simple question is aniline to acetanilite how can you do make the aniline with the help of a base to n minus treat with the corresponding CH 3 CO group as CH 3 CO Cl. So, simple SN 2 reaction will take place you get NH CO CH 3. So, aniline to acid and light. So, this type of reactions is very important which to minimize the number of carbon atom from an amide just to get it converted to the amine. I told that one of the very interesting reactions of amine is especially aryl amine is the conversion of aryl amine to the diazo compound. And I also told that sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid in lower temperature is 0 to 5 degree centigrade converts the aryl amine to aryl diazonium compound. And this aryl diazonium compound with cupras oxide 
I, I said a general reaction C u x and H x that is called Sand Meyer reaction. But if you do it cuprous oxide or cupric ion little bit in presence of water you get phenol, cuprous halide you get aryl halide, halide may be bromine, chlorine, iodine etcetera, cuprous cyanide you get aryl nitrile that is C n, K i aryl iodide all these things because number of functionality or functional group could be introduced by this way. Aryl amine diazotized to make the diazonium salt treat with fluoroboric acid you end up with the fluoride very very difficult otherwise ERF with phosphorus acid H 3 PO 2 you get the simple benzene that is a very common question being asked how can you remove the nitrogen completely with the hydrogen very simple answer is hypophosphorus acid H 3 PO 2 which gives that proton to give it ARH. So, these are some general technique to convert the aryl diazonium salt to the corresponding substituted compounds it start, start from functional group phenolic OH, halide, nitrile, iodide, fluoride, hydrogen etcetera. Okay, some biological importance of course, we will have to every time to see what we are doing, what we are studying, what is the importance not only in the everyday life in the biological system also. If somebody asks you is the aryl amines important or aliphatic amines important in the biological field? Answer is many, many because you can name thinking from the morning to evening how many uh, aryl amine derivatives are being used or you know. One simple answer is 2 phenyl ethyl amine, you see benzene ring with a substitution CH2, CH2, NH2. This should be called one position is next to the nitrogen, two position is the next carbon which is having a benzene ring attached. So, it is 2 phenyl ethyl amine, very important compound. And this 2 phenyl ethyl amine, the one position being substituted by a methyl and of course, the hydrogen and if we put the methyl and hydrogen in this case you see very carefully methyl is with the broken bond that is called alpha bond which means the below the plane and hydrogen is a thick bond which means beta bond means above the plane and other two bonds that is the in plane bonds are carbon carbon and carbon nitrogen. So, in an sp 3 hybridize all the time we will see as it is the regular tetrahedron 2 one will be up another will be down and two will be in plane. In plane bonds are being written in normal lines above the plane with thick lines and below the plane with broken lines. So, these are the technology and amphetamine is a benzeridine de derivative benzeridine that means, this type of compound is also very much important having a medicinal value. So, this type of compounds are chiral, chirality is very important when a, a general terminology people say when there is a carbon having all four different groups and if I put a mirror I get the mirror image of that and bring that mirror image and superpose on that if that does not superpose or superimpose we call these two isomers as enantiomer. So, non superposable mirror image relationship is called enantiomer, but one restricted condition at this stage I am telling you that it should be all four different groups and to fix the bonding this alpha beta things are very important one group is below the plane another above the plane and the remaining two are in plane being written in that way. Next example adrenaline that is the hormone secretion nor adrenaline what is that? Here also hydrogen and hydroxy groups are there and you have then amine that is NHR. So, that means many hormones, steroids and other derivatives histamine, dopamine all these compounds are amine derivative. So, yes answer is important amines having biological activities and that is very very important. Another example is serotonin. And we, we know not only this in vitamins which is a vital force of life, the pyridoxine is a vitamin B 6 where 
we have a structure where nitrogen is also being present or nicotinic acid where nitrogen is present in the pyridine moiety and carboxylic acid group is in the 3 position the or 3 carboxy pyridine. Anti histamine that is allergy people gets allergy because of the secretion of histamine. So, how to prevent that that is the anti histamines. So, anti histamines are also available and histamine is nothing but an alkyl amine CH 2 CH 2 NH 2, but it is in a pyrrole unit there is one more nitrogen atom in the ring. And there are many other example based on the structural features and the biological activity. So, to make a long story short I can say yes aliphatic and aromatic amines are very much important for biological system. Not only this, this is just some example there are plenty of compounds known which are being tremendous medicinal value which is being used. So, amines are very important class of organic compounds where carbon nitrogen bond is present. How to synthesize amine that I started with because carbon nitrogen bond will have to keep other substituent may be hydrogen or oxygen etcetera. Simplest way to make is by treating alkyl halide with ammonia or amide or NH 2. So, NH 3 plus R x what will happen you get a salt that is aminium salt R NH 3 plus x minus treat with a base you get the primary amine one way of making that primary amine. So, the nucleophilic substitution of alkyl halides with ammonia is a very general method for the synthesis of primary amine where instead of ammonia you can take R N H 2. So, that you get the substituted amine also. The reaction may be carried out in aqueous or alcoholic solution because solvent is needed to minimize the heat of the reaction and to mix the components in a better way. So, solvent has having tremendous role not only the control the appropriate temperature, but also mix the component in proper way. And then water or ethanol very common solvent being used and uh, solution of ammonia that is ammonium hydroxide is also available. So, all the usual structure uh, limitation could be solved by a simple SN2 type reaction that is a primary alkyl halide 1 degree treated with ammonia it undergoes a substitution. What is being substituted? The bromine being substituted by NH 3 plus and Br minus. So, this is the butyl ammonium bromide while the tertiary this is the very important question why the tertiary bromide when treated with ammonia you end up with isobutene no amine being produced why I am giving you keeping it for you to think when a primary alkyl bromide being treated with ammonia you get the butyl ammonium bromide where nitrogen being attached while a 3 degree or tertiary butyl bromide is treated with ammonia you get the nitrogen expelled out as ammonium bromide and you get isobutene a simple carbon hydrogen compound no nitrogen no bromine. Why it is happening? Because of the steric factor on this carbon in the first case is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. In the second case to do that type of nucleophilic substitution reaction the steric factor is playing a role. What is that steric factor? 3 methyl groups donated donating electron to the carbon which is being attached to bromine electron density getting increased steric bulks also stopping the approach of the nucleophile in this case ammonia to come opposite to the bromine atom. So, what it does it can pick up the hydrogen of any of this carbon atom that is methyl groups very easily because that is not sterically blocked and at the same time throw the bromine. So, when in a reaction two atoms or groups are leaving the system at a time we call that type of reaction is an elimination reaction. If they are attached to the same carbon that is called alpha elimination if they are attached to the next carbon one from one carbon second from the second one then we call that type of is a beta elimination. So, in that way gamma delta elimination reaction could be obtained. 
So, in the first case it is a substitution, in the second case it is the elimination. So, very important and very nice way to make the from tertiary butyl amine you want if you want to make the uh, amine with ammonia you will not get. Why? This is the reason because elimination is much faster to stop the substitution reaction. Hydrolysis of amide a very important term that is carboxamide amides are derived from carboxylic acid. Say if I ask you how can you make benzamide C 6 H 5 C O N H 2 your answer will be I will take the carboxylic acid benzoic acid commercially available convert it to the benzoyl chloride by phosphorus pentachloride or thionyl chloride and treat with ammonia or you can do it in other way around that is n phenyl benzamide if you take that is CO NH two sides there are two benzene rings and hydrolyze with HCl in presence of of course, water should be there and heat it. You get the corresponding arylamine salt that is a C 6 H 5 NH 3 plus and the benzoic acid. That means, from the starting material what you are getting you are getting one type that is NH 3 plus other is free carboxylic acid. If you hydrolyze instead of acid with the help of a base that is OH minus in presence of water and heat this thing what will happen to bench anilite? It will be converted to aniline because it will not be produced salt in the basic medium. Whereas, the benzoic acid what was there in the first case will be converted to the benzoate because base will pick up the acidic proton COH that H is acidic proton. Likewise, one very important uh, I should say the antibiotics came from the sulfonamide thing. So, sulfonamides are very important in the field of organic chemistry that functionality. Sulfonamides hydrolyze much more slowly than carboxamide, but this is very interesting phenomena. Why? But hydrolysis does occur under acidic condition. It hydrolyzes slower than that of carboxamide, but hydrolysis does occur under acidic condition. These are very important question. Under basic condition, the rapid formation of an anion derived from the acid, acidic hydrogen, the, uh, the hydrogen atom being attached to nitrogen is acidic. So, could be picked up very easily by base inhibits nucleophilic attack and hydrolysis. Look at this R N H S O 2 A R P K A of that hydrogen is close to 10. Treated with H C L water heat you get R N H 3 plus and A R S O 3 H that means A R S O 3 H portion is not keeping that nitrogen, but R is picking up the nitrogen. Whereas, when you are doing it in alkali medium, so change of acid or to base or base to acid is making a tremendous difference in the product. When you are doing it in HCl, you are getting RNH3 plus ARSO3H like the previous case. When you are doing it in OH minus in water and heat, what you are getting? You are getting an RNSOAR. Why this type of SO2AR? Why this type of thing is very special. Answer is sulfonyl S double bond O that can delocalize the electron pair of the nitrogen to the oxygen. Not only one oxygen there are two oxygen in the top or the bottom and we can write many resonating structure in this way. So, this resist the hydrolysis why because resonance more the resonating structure more the stability and when more the stabili stability the co compounds reactivity will be less. So, this resists the hydrolysis because of the resonance stabilization. So, very nice question. Sulfonamides hydrolyze much more slowly than carboxamides why, but this hydrolysis is possible under acidic condition again why answer is very nicely given that if you treat with OH minus you get the corresponding anion where this nitrogen anion or the negative charge on the nitrogen getting delocalized to the two oxygen atoms of the sulfonyl group. And another very important feature if, if we have a symmetrical resulting structure its contribution is maximum, because we cannot look at the energetically that is much more preferred. When you have two 
symmetrical resonating structure its contribution towards resonance hybrid is much much greater than say 5 or 6 charge separated resonating structure. Why? Because symmetry stabilizes the molecule. Okay, so, let me take a step forward a colorful thing that is cocaine. If I ask you have you seen it somewhere or do you know the name? Answer is yes, it is the coca leaves which was first used as an anesthetic for operation purpose, but now people also use it as a narcotics that is a bad use, but it also blocked sodium plus channels with lower affinity and specificity than tetradoxin. So, it is a substitute for other medicine that is a plus point and this is coming from some flowers and look at the structure why this type of compound is important and why I have picked up this thing. I should say this type of compound having medicinal value having a carbon nitrogen bond and a very beautiful structure one side is COOCH3 that is an ester group another is OCOCCH5 that is also ester in the reverse direction. So, that type of thing having a 7 member ring and a carbon carbon bridging through the help of nitrogen that nitrogen the third substituent is methyl is cocaine and this type of compound should be classified as an alkaloid. Why? Because alkali like nature nitrogen containing compound having medicinal value obtained from plants. So, all these things are being fully satisfied. So, the compound will be called the alkaloid having some medicinal value. Okay, another interesting feature that uh, organic chemist also cooperate with biologists nowadays people get when get ill or sick they talk about the bacterial or viral infection what sort of thing has happened. Some pictures I have taken from the literature and we see that doctors advise that if you get a viral infection do not take antibiotics because this will not help you, but only it will give a secondary protection. That means, if in case because of weakness or because of viral infection you get weaker and bacterial infection takes place that will be stopped by antibiotics. So, one is a bacterial thing another is a viral thing virus bacteria polio virus this is the picture and streptococcus that is the viral thing and that is the bacteria. Oh, these are the things being listed by the doctors in many journals. Can you think of some illness caused by viruses or caused by bacteria? You, you know no doubt. Look, look at the list, list is sometimes for bacterial infections are step throat, gastroenteritis, cholera, tuberculosis, food poisoning all these are bacterial thing boils, pneumonia, acne, what not ulcers. And viral things is also even the common flu is a viral thing, AIDS, colds, hepatitis, chicken pox, all these are viral thing, Ebola, there are some common things also there, you might fit in both bacterial and the viral side. So, to kill those things, viral things, viral medicines are not much in the market, but bacterial medicines are tremendous that is antibiotics. I said that one of the very important compound of carbon nitrogen is not only that amino acid, protein, peptides, but also the antibiotics. The first antibiotics which came in the market or many lives were saved was discovered that everybody knows was by Alexander Fleming that is nothing but the penicillin. I have got some picture from the literature what shows that Penicillin was discovered from the fungus of Penicillium notatum in 1928 by Alexander Fleming. And Alexander Fleming got Nobel Prize in Physiology in the year 1945. So, there are some photographs of Fleming receiving the Nobel Prize and Fleming doing this discovery. Do you know how this discovery was done and how Fleming came to the penicillin as a very good antibiotic to kill the bacteria. 
if I look at the next slide it will be very clear this was an accidental discovery. On 3rd September 1928 Fleming returned to his laboratory having spent the vacation that is August on vacation with his family. Before leaving it is a very interesting thing he had put his cultures of staphylococci in a corner of his laboratory. On returning Fleming noticed that one culture was contaminated with a fungus and that the colonies of staphylococci that had immediately surrounded it had been destroyed. You can see this one very clear all the things have been destroyed. Whereas, the other colonies this colonies have grown further away were normal. Fleming identified the mold that had contaminated his culture plates as being from penicillium genus and named the substance it released as penicillin on 7th March 1929. You see so sometimes accidental discoveries are being made there are many example one very nice example of that of Fleming. So, what we see that penicillium fungus that one accidentally was contaminated because it was the petri dish containing agar agar jelly and this, the bacteria where there was no contamination like this bacteria growth is taking on that means no antibacterial effect was being found. But in this case the penicillium fungus surrounding that there is no growth of bacteria. So, he analyzed what is that contaminated thing and in found it is the penicillium thing and look at the structure very carefully this is the actual picture. The structure contains nothing but a nitrogen carbonyl carbon carbon that is a four membered nitrogen containing organic compound that is called beta lactam having of course, other side that is a sulfur containing five member ring and a NH with a substitution of benzyl thing. So, what I mean to say the carbon nitrogen compound I should say having tremendous potential as an antibiotic was first discovered by Fleming and there are many antibiotics nowadays people use penicillin, cephalosporin all that those are beta lactam antibiotics even monobactam simple beta lactam no sulfur and other sites are there they also have good antibacterial properties. So, I will continue with other topics related to carbon nitrogen bond little later thank you.